Hello everyone, today I want to talk about Superbase, my honest review after building three startups with it. And I want to share everything, like pros, cons, and in the end, should you use it for your next project. But before that, I want to give you some background. Originally, I was a front-end engineer, and I worked in companies for seven years. Then I quit my job, went into content creation and building startups, and by the time of quitting my job, I was already a senior front-end engineer. Also, from time to time, I was working a bit as a back-end engineer, full stack, but nothing special. I definitely had some experience with back-end. I knew like, concepts of how it works, but definitely not enough to build a standalone back-end alone. So yeah, I'm definitely a front-end guy, and we can start first with pros, and that's just the UI and overall developer experience. I don't know how they made it, but somehow for such a super complex platform, Superbase managed to look amazing. Like the UI is simply gorgeous. Everything is nice and intuitive. There are so many things that it handles like database, authentication, storage, edge functions, which are like serverless and like way, way, way more stuff is inside in this beautiful app. When people talk about Superbase, they often compare it to Firebase. I personally used Firebase, but that was three years ago. I just used it for one of my hobby projects while I was still working my nine to five. So I cannot say anything objectively because I simply don't have enough experience with it. Some people love it. I personally didn't like it on the first because you have their fire store, while Superbase has Postgres, and I prefer SQL databases. But I just knew when I was starting, since I didn't have great experiences with Firebase, I was like, let's try Superbase. And from the beginning, everything was perfect. It's also amazing that Superbase scales. You can upgrade it if you need more stuff, but they actually have a lot, a lot of startups running on like 25 to $50 a month bills which is which is completely crazy and i agree costs of superbase are really cheap so from somebody like me who was an experienced front-end engineer so i definitely know how to build complex front-end systems from scratch i don't know how to do back-end superbase is perfection because for those operations like inserting into database obviously like classic CRUD, like select, insert, delete, update. For that, it is perfect for all the filtering and everything. You also have edge functions, which is kind of like Superbase serverless functions, and they work pretty well. But I need to talk more about them because later I realized they actually don't work that well. For my first startup, which is Sparrow, Sparrow is a digital Hollywood, well, film people connect and create projects. It's also a screenplay marketplace. You can buy, sell your screenplays and so on. And for Sparrow, which is my first project, and at the time it didn't have AI, now it's enhanced with AI uh, script uh, assistant. But before, most of the stuff was on front end. It was really front end heavy project, while back end was well, they're mostly just for storing data, some super light processing and maybe Stripe webhooks, but that's basically it. For that, Superbase Edge functions were perfection. However, they have really strict limitations. So as you can see, you have these like really strict limits, like maximum memory, maximum duration, maximum CPU time, and like maximum function size. It's just really, limited if you want to do some heavy processing and then functions will crash. You will constantly hit CPU limits, memory limits, and so on. For example, for my second startup, which is Second Brain, their front-end is medium complex, but back-end is really complex. So I Second Brain is a tool where you can chat with um, YouTube videos, PDFs, websites, and everything. You can combine all those sources together and then, I don't know, you, for example, drop a coding webinar, you drop your code in GitHub repo and tell, improve me my code based on the knowledge in the webinar. So you kind of like get it, what's the thing? 
but the processing on the back end is really, really heavy there. And especially, I don't know, for example, I need to process a massive PDF. I want to chat with the book and I need to process a PDF of like 500 pages. And for that edge functions were unusable because they were crashing. It's not that I just need to parse all the text, but I need to store it in a vector database before I need to optimize it for AI, blah, blah, blah. We're not going to get into that, but edge functions simply didn't work. So in the end, I needed to create a separate node project. I deployed it to Fly.io. That is really perfect, super simple. It also scales automatically because I need something like that. I'm, a, I'm not experienced in backend, so I cannot build everything fully from scratch. And a combination of Fly.io plus node, so far it works perfect. I will let you know when I'll have some problems with that. But then I also realized Dana in Superbase, it simply doesn't work that well. I mean, you have those problems with imports, then some packages simply won't work well with Dana. It is a bit annoying and it feels like for me, just know that's not production ready, that people are still experimenting with it. Of course, you can set up everything and make it work relatively okay, but when I later started my own Node project, I mean, Node and TypeScript, it just worked perfectly. It felt like, it felt literally like I'm doing things on the front end, but I'm just on the back end. But then uh, in Surveys Edge functions, it just never, it never feels like that. I can never get it working so, working so well. I would still suggest Superbase for everything else, but then like for some more complex things, create a separate node project because probably these edge functions won't serve you that well for complex things. The other cons besides edge functions is documentation. It is relatively good, but sometimes you just feel like somebody had a task to write this chapter, but they just did it like with 1% of their will. And then you have like a really, I don't know, just couple of lines for something that's like really complex and you just have five sentences and not even a code example and that can sometimes be a bit bad but overall documentation is really good it's not the best it's not stripe documentation but it is relatively good but definitely not the best and finally should you pick superbase as you can see i already built three startups with it so first sparrow then second brain and even when I was aware of those problems with Superbase Edge functions, I still used uh, I still used Superbase for my third startup, Ragapi. Ragapi is what it says on the tin, RAG API. So Retrieval Augmented Generation API that you can basically, with a couple of lines of code, add chatting with single or multiple YouTube documents to your app. It is basically the core of Second Brain. I put it out and then I connected Sparrow to it and now other people is, are using it. And it's really cool because I suffered so much when I was building this AI rag pipeline stuff with Second Brain. And then I was like, but why wouldn't I just take the core out and make a public API out of it? And yes, I still use Superbase for it because Superbase is absolutely amazing for me as a front-end engineer who's not an expert in backend and who, ha who cannot build everything in backend from scratch. Superbase is perfection because it will, it has a super nice UI where I can do everything in uh, all the analytics. It has authentication. It, uh, it has a nice Postgres database. I love RLS and Postgres and all those like security things filtering and uh, obviously everything with CRUD, it's just amazing. I simply love it. The user experience and everything, it is really nice. However, when you have some more complex backend processing, I would just suggest the same as I did it now. I didn't regret it to go with Superbase uh, with Ragapi because again, I have a separate node project that's handling all the complex stuff. If you look at serverless stuff, it often has some limitations. So I don't know if you can actually call that cons with edge functions. If you're an experienced front-end engineer, I would suggest you not to build your own backend from scratch because you will probably mess something up and you need a solution like Superbase or Firebase. For that, it is literally perfect. I know I was speaking a lot about cons, but in reality, they're really not not too many cons, maybe like 
five percent of the time it's annoying and 95 percent of the time it's like oh my god thank you god so much for this amazing tool because without it my apps would be really really terrible superbase can also definitely scale i mean i've seen some people like completely going crazy with like 20 million daily requests feel free to share your thoughts have you ever used superbase are you experienced with firebase have you maybe used both a lot so that you can compare both please share your thoughts i would love to hear them and of course follow for more dev stuff with the second brain i literally i have my instagram page and there i share everything because i build it in public my goal was to build it in public before launch but then i realized no even after launch i will continue building it in public i will continue share I will continue to share my problems, my challenges, my failures, my successes, everything transparently because people love to share challenges and love to make everything shiny. But I share how I suck at something and how something doesn't work and how my emails go to spam and I, how I cannot get more revenue. And I just share all those things because people need to hear it. Otherwise, from the outside, everything looks so perfect. Everything is so shiny. We're all making so much money. But no, I mean, in reality, you have a lot of you have a lot of problems and not just me, but any company. I mean, you'll have startups, unicorn startups that have massive, massive problems behind the scenes, but you just don't see it because of that shiny facade, like everything is perfect. It's not. So my goal with this is to help developers who want to start coding, share all of my problems and failures. So maybe you will actually skip some of the failures and learn on my lessons. But yeah, I just want to share the journey transparently. I just want to share the journey transparently. So feel free to follow if you're interested. Cheers.